Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your C++ tutorial series. This video, we're going to talk all about constructors. But before we get started, check out our sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ codebase and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. Now a constructor is a special function that is called when a class is instantiated. So when we go down to our main function, you can see I am creating some new users here. When we do this, that method is being called. Now there's no obvious output because the function doesn't really do a whole lot, but we can explicitly define it and tell it to do whatever we want. So if we go into our class definition, inside of the public section, we're going to create a new function, no return type, and it has the same exact name as the class. So in this case, it's going to be user. And what we can do is we can just output constructor. So every single time this method is hit, it'll output constructor and we'll be able to see when it's happening. So let's compile and run. And we get a couple calls to constructor. It looks like four of them. Well, looking at our code, each time we create a new user here, it is called. And then down at the bottom, we're creating another user. So it's called there as well. So this is what is known as the default constructor because it has no parameters. We can create additional constructors that take parameters. So for example, we can take ones that take the first name and last name. We can use this constructor to make sure the object is instantiated properly and in full. So specifically, we can pass in the first name and last name here, and we can assign it to the data members up here. So that way we know that as soon as the user is created, it has a first name and a last name. So to do this, we have a little issue. You can see that this has the same exact name as the parameter. So if you want to specify this one, you can do it with the this keyword, and that's going to look like this. Then you're going to draw a little arrow and then say first name and assign it the value first name. Then we do that again for last name. So this one here refers to the first name of the object. This one here refers to the argument being passed in. And you can see it highlighted a little bit there if you look really closely. So now when we create a user, here's what we can do. Inside of our code, let me just clean some of this up. We can say user and pass in some values such as Caleb and Curry. And when we compile, it looks like I have one little issue. Let me go back up to our method and we just need to add a semicolon right there. Now, when we compile, we should be able to immediately output that value once the application is ran and you can see we get Caleb. So going back to our class, we have the option to get rid of the default constructor. And in this situation, it's not going to implicitly create it. So that means if I go back in our code and I say user me and I don't use any parentheses and pass any arguments, we're going to get an error. And you can see candidate constructor was not viable. It requires two arguments, but zero were provided. So if you want to get rid of the default constructor, that is the proper way to do it. So constructors allow us to initialize objects with particular values. So that's one way we can do that. Another way is inside of the class definition, we can assign default values here in line. When should you use which? Well, if you're wanting to assign values on a case by case basis, you will want to use the constructor. Constructors are also a way for us to set the initial state for some of these private data members. So for example, in here, I could take the status and we can assign that to this object. All right, now let's go back to our code and we're going to change this call here and we're going to pass in silver. Now when you output user.getStatus, it should output silver. Oops, make sure we add those parentheses there because it's a function call. Now when we run this, you can see we get silver, but we're not able to access status directly. So when we say user.status, no matter how we use that, that's going to cause an error. So if we try to output that, it's not going to work. All right, so that is your basics of constructors. Now I'm going to mention briefly destructors. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to scroll up to our class and I'm going to minimize this function because it's driving me crazy. And we're going to say user, but we're going to preface it with a squiggly. And here is the constructor. We can output destructor. And you can see when we run this application, it's going to call the destructor and output that automatically. 
So if you need to do something special inside the destructor, that is how you would do that. So thank you guys for watching. That's your introduction to constructors and destructors. Hopefully it gave you what you need to know. And of course, I'll see you all in the next video where we're going to talk about encapsulation. So that's going to be pretty cool. See you then.